Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for SPSS. This screencast covers section 10.6, Introduction to Parametric ANOVA, including section 10.7, One-Way Parametric ANOVA with Equal Numbers of Replicates, section 10.8, Two Keys Test, and section 10.9, One-Way Parametric ANOVA with Unequal Replicates. This test asks if three or more independent data samples can be considered to be from a common statistical population. A significant result indicates that this is unlikely and that there are significant differences between two or more of the samples. For example, Table 10.7 gives the fresh weight of the Lobelia variety HANA grown in one of four types of compost eight weeks post weaning from a tissue culture environment. The question is whether any of the compost promotes superior growth of the plants. There are two common parametric one-way ANOVA tests implemented by programs and which one you will use depends on whether the variances are similar or not. We can test if the variances are similar, also termed homogeneous, by doing an F-test first on the data using the program. See chapter 10 in the book and box 10.7 for further details. One of the main reasons why your data may not have homogeneous variances is if you have unequal replicates. That is, unlike the data in table 10.7, your samples have different number of data points. In general, when using these programs, do not worry about whether your replicates are equal or not. Focus instead on using the correct test for whether the variances are similar or different, as the program will use the correct statistical test for unequal sample sizes if required. If you get a significant result from the ANOVA, you may then wish to work out which samples are significantly different from each other. We cannot simply do a t-test for each sample pair combination, as this increases the likelihood of type 1 errors. Instead, there are many other tests collectively called post hoc tests that can be carried out. In many cases, we prefer to use a test called the Tukey's test, although other tests, such as the Games Hull test, will be suggested in the screencast if required. So let's do the test. I have already entered the data from table 10.7 into SPSS. The composts are denoted by a simple number between 1 and 4, and the plant weights are in grams. This is how I have set my variables up. You may wish to pause the video at this point. I have entered the compass types as numbers, but I want to use letters for clarity. I have started the process, but just need to finish it off as follows. I go up to values and click. As you can see, I have entered the values 1 to 3 already. I am now going to enter value 4, which I add in the value box, and I want to give it the label capital D. I now press add and OK. To get SPSS to display the labels instead of the numbers, I can click this split arrow button here. I could also track across to view, click and down to value labels. To do the test, track across to analyse and click, down to compare means and select one way ANOVA from the drop down sub menu and click. First, I need to tell SPSS where to find my sample values. These are under plant weight, which I'm going to select and I'm going to transfer it to the dependent list using the selection arrow. Now I need to tell it which variable to use to divide the sample values up into their relevant groups. This information is found in compost, which I'm going to select and add to the factor box by pressing the selection arrow. I now need to set some options up. I'm going to click the option button. I'm going to ask it to test for the homogeneity of variances. Click in the relevant box. I'm also going to ask it to run the Welch test which is the test we use when the variances are not homogeneous. I now press continue. Now for the post hoc test. I'm going to click the post hoc test button. I'm going to use two key test if our variances are equal. But if our variances are not equal, I'm going to use the games hull test. I'm going to select that and press continue and then press OK. The output window gives us five different boxes. The first box is for the test for homogeneity of variances, in this case the Levine's test. We can see that it's given us a significance of 0 0.261. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A value of 0.261 is above our transition value of 0.05, which means the result is not significant and that we cannot reject the null hypothesis. 
that states that there is no difference between the variances of our samples. So in this case, we will use the results from the ANOVA test that assumes equal variances followed by the Tukey's post hoc test. The results from the ANOVA test can be found in box 2. It shows a probability of 0 0.003, which is below our transition value of 0 0.05. And we can say that there is a significant difference between our composts and can reject the null hypothesis. In fact, the difference is below 0 0.01. So we could conclude that there is a highly significant difference between the mean fresh weight of Lobelia variety Anna when weaned on four different composts. If our variances had not been equal, we would then use the results from box 3, which contains the results for the Welch test. The results from the ANOVA does not tell us specifically which composts outperform each other. For this we have to look at the results from the two keys test. If we scroll down, we can see a fourth box. This box summarises the results for both the Tukey's test and the Games Hull test. We would use this last test if our samples did not have equal variances, but since ours do, we will use the data output from the Tukey's test. We can see that there are four rows, each comparing the data from a single compost, named in the I compost column, with the other three compost data samples, named in the column J compost. A p-value comparison is given in column 6, headed SIG, indicating if there is a significant difference or not between the two named samples. For instance, in the row concerning compost A, we can see that two of our comparisons, that between composts A and B and compost A and D, have probability values below our 0.05 transition value, indicating that there is a significant difference between the mean fresh weight of Lobelia plants or the variety HANA when weaned from the tissue culture environment on these composts. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.